Dear students, now we will look at the scoring scheme and the traceback strategy for the NJ algorithm. So once you have filled up the entire matrix which contains the scores, then you can then you need to trace it back. As you would remember, there are four positions that are considered for filling up each position in the matrix. And uh, these contributions are put down and you take the maximum one from these four. So next, how do we know the best structure from the matrix? By just looking at the matrix scores, it is difficult to arrive at the secondary structure. Therefore, there is a strategy that is called the traceback strategy. Now we will look at the traceback by looking at an example matrix. As you can see in this matrix, we have filled up all the positions with scores that resulted by looking at the left bottom diagonal as well as the bottom column and the left row. The text in red shows contributions that have come from the fourth condition here. So once you have the scores filling up the matrix, then you need to know which position contributed the most. So once you are able to do that, then you can have a trace back. Let's take a look. Starting from the last position, that is 12, we know during our calculations that this 12 was actually taken from the bottom element this 12. Next, this 12 came from the bottom element as well as shown by the second arrow and this 10 actually came from the 8 that resulted in the score of 10 and this 8 came from the row, same row and this 8 came from the diagonal as well and so on and so forth. So the important thing to remember here is that while you are filling up the matrix, you must note down which position is contributing the maximum score from the four possible positions. So whichever position is giving you the maximum score, you note it down and during your trace back, you just follow it in the reverse order, starting from the last and going till the diagonal. Another important thing that you need to note by looking at this matrix is that if the matrix has a trace back that has the same numbers in a single row, then it means that the nucleotide will actually, these two nucleotides will actually help you to form a bulge in the RNA secondary structure. Similarly, if you have two scores that in the same column, then it means that these two nucleotides will be forming a bulge. Therefore, you need to know that the bulges should be minimized. Hence, an ideal trace back would essentially only comprise of diagonals. But as you know, there are these situations where two nucleotides cannot be coupled and are therefore not in the diagonal. Hence, you have to introduce that nucleotide as a bulge. Once you have completed the trace back, then you are ready to look at the secondary structure. Another important point to note here is that there can be multiple trace backs for a single matrix. So if you have a matrix that you have constructed by looking at the maximum contribution from four different positions in the matrix, then there is a chance that such a trace back can also exist for a different set of scores. The next question that comes to mind is that if such is the case, then how can you select between the two secondary structures. 
However, we are lucky with this because since the final score is the same in this NJ matrix, therefore you can choose either one of them. But if the energies of coupling are involved, then that would mean that you will have to also calculate the energy and from the two structures, you will select the one with the lower energy. Although their score in the matrix and trace back would be the same, but you would prefer to have the structure with the lower energy. So therefore, as I just mentioned, each trace back can be used to construct a separate secondary structure and you have to uh, look at the trace back with the maximum coupled nucleotide.